Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to the thrilling Vaughn Manor where it's another Hall of Adventure. Didn't we just have one of these? We just, we just had one of these. Well, here we are back at it. You see, I've got a book haul today, four days after my last one, because, well, I'll tell you, this book haul defies all explanation. It's just a mystery how this happened. You know, I have to say, though, that, of course, as usual, I'm in no way responsible for any of these books. It pretty much is always Roger over here. Roger, the undead mummy, he's always responsible for these books that show up here at Vaughn Manor, at least mostly. But this week, there are other people who are responsible for these books that have arrived. Of course, as usual, I am to blame for none of them. But there are other guilty parties for all of these books that have arrived in the last three days. And there's a pile of them, so let's get through them. Okay, who is to blame? Who's to blame for all these books? So, the first person to blame is my mom. My mom sent me a bunch of books. <laughs> she sent me a, a box of books, my mother did. So, you know, all my mother's fault, sending me books. What am I gonna do? I have to take them, they're from my mom. So. Let's go through the books my mom sent me first. The, the, this first one, she put a little note on it saying that it would be good for Garbogus 2023. And that would be this one. This is Covenant with the Vampire, The Diaries of the Family Dracul by Jean Cologridis. Cologridis? Jean Cologridis. I'm probably mispronouncing that as I mispronounce every name. But this is Covenant with the Vampire, which apparently is kind of a trashy book. Yay, that's good, that's good news. So, I will probably save this for Garb August. Garb August 2023 next year. If I don't break down and read it before then, which, you know, I might. But Covenant with the Vampire, Garb August approved by my mom. And then she sent me these other books, and these other books look pretty cool. This first one is from Roger Zelazny. This is Roger Zelazny to die in Italbar, to die in Italbar, or Italbar, Italbar, I don't know, but to die there by Roger Zelazny. You know, you gotta go sometime, and you might as well go in Italbar. So says Roger Zelazny. This is an old Da book. It's pretty cool. So that's awesome. Thanks, Mom. That's pretty cool, Roger Zelazny. And I've got another old Da book, but this one is Cosmic Crusaders by Pierre Barbet. Cosmic Crusaders by Pierre Barbet. Two complete alternate universe novels in one big da volume. Baphomet's Meteor and Stellar Crusade. These are both translated from French, I'm assuming. I've never read this book, but I will because it's going into the final box of vintage science fiction for my vintage science fiction project. Cosmic Crusaders, that looks pretty awesome. And this one looks pretty awesome, too. I like the cover on this one. This is James Blish, A Life for the Stars. So, of course, I talked about James Blish just a few videos ago when I talked about his Star Trek series. But he did a lot more than that. So this is A Life for the Stars by Hugo Award winner James Blish. Nomadic Earth cities roam the planets. So this is one of these cities in flight novels. A Life for the Stars by James Blish. And I really like that cover. That is really cool. So thanks, Mom. That's awesome. And this is another James Blish, but this is one that he wrote with Robert Lowndes. This is the, duplica the Duplicated Man. The Duplicated Man. Look, this man is being duplicated. He's being duplicated right now on this cover. That's some science fiction stuff going on right there. The Duplicated Man. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. This next one is really cool, too, because... This is from Harry Harrison, author of Death World. Bill, the galactic hero. Bill, the galactic hero. I used to have this book like a long time ago, but it wasn't this edition. This is the edition back when this was a new science fiction novel by Harry Harrison. So this is really cool. Bill, the galactic hero with this old timey cover. Going right into that box of vintage science fiction. That's awesome. Thanks, Mom. This is really cool. And this next one is very much a book that I would get from my mother. This is Cats in Space and other places. Cats in Space! Look at those naughty cats in space. Well, 
as we learned from my last Mythos Monday, Mondays, uh, cats spend a lot of time on the moon, apparently. Well, according to Lovecraft, they do. So here they are, cats in space. Makes sense now, doesn't it? Sure does. Look at these guys. Cats in space and other places edited by Bill Fawcett. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool right there, cats in space. Now this next one is an oddity. The Memoirs of Satan. The Memoirs of Satan. From the collected edition of the works of William Gerhardi, or Gerhardi, I don't know, one of those. So I'd never heard of this book until my mom was talking about it. The Memoirs of Satan talks about Satan's memoirs, you know, he's just talking about his life and times and history. Of course, it's fictional. Satan isn't real. Uh, so these aren't Satan's real memoirs. I have to say that because some people might think so. Some people who watch YouTube too much. The Memoirs of Satan by William Jahardi or Gerhardi, one of those. What else do I have? Okay, one last book for my mother. This is Paladin Unbound. An Archives of Elevium Tale by Jeffrey Spate. This is a fantasy novel of some kind. I haven't heard of this one either, but my mom sent it to me, so here it is, Paladin Unbound. Paladin Unbound. So that's all the books that I can blame on my mom. I do have a pile of books that I cannot blame on her, but I can blame on other people. Now this next one, uh, this is, Keys to the Inner Universe, written by Bill Pearl, the revised edition. So Bill Pearl did pass away, very sadly, recently. So I'm not going to blame Bill Pearl for my getting this book. But really, did I have any choice? So I had no choice. It's for my health. So I used to have this particular book. I have other books by Bill Pearl, but not this one. Not for a while. I did have this a long time ago, but it vanished. Actually, my, it might have belonged to my brother. It might have belonged to my brother, but I remember this book specifically. So I got it once again to help with my physical fitness. You know, when you get to be an old timer, strength training is actually more important than ever. It is, because this is, when you get to your 50s, that's around the time things start falling apart if you don't really take care of yourself. So you gotta take care of yourself. So. One of the reasons I got this book, it's full of all kinds of cool exercises, which have these great diagrams and descriptions. There is a simple chin up right there, simple pull up, which actually, if you ask me, this exercise here is the most important exercise because you want to be able to pull yourself up out of trouble if you need to. So it's got, you know, real world applications, the pull up. You want to be able to pull yourself up. So yeah, that's an important exercise. I think it's the most important one out of all of them. There you go. Now this next book, I just blame entirely on Roger. I don't even know how this book ended up here, but this is actually more James Blish, which is a volume that includes that book my mom sent me. This is Cities in Flight, the collected edition of Cities in Flight with this cool old timey weirdo cover. Yeah, so James Blish, Cities in Flight. Roger decided that since I didn't have this, I can't really have a vintage science fiction project without all the City in Flight stories. Uh, so this has They Shall Have Stars, A Life for the Stars, which I just got the paperback edition of, Earthman, Come Home, and The Triumph of Time. Yeah, and it used to belong to Larry Dahl. Thanks, Larry, for sending me your book. It's mine now, Larry. Thanks to Roger over here, I had, I had nothing to do with it. Nothing, nothing to do with it. So these next three books, I blame entirely, entirely on Steve Donahue. Steve Donahue, you can actually blame for a lot of things, many things which aren't even his fault. But this time, it's something that is his fault. It's his fault I got these last few books. He did a video recently called The 12 Classics You Must Read. The 12 Classics You Must Read. Steve did a video titled this, which seems like a really arrogant title. I don't know where he comes up with these ideas, but he did this video 
the 12 classics that you classic books you must read. So there were three on there that I hadn't read, so I had to get them because Steve made me. He made me by making that video, that guy. So the first book is this one. This is The Canterbury Tales by Chaucer, Geoffrey Chaucer. Now, you might say, hey, Mike, isn't that a classic you should have read by now? So they say, I've been, I've been called on the carpet for not having read this book before, and here I am being told I need to read it by Steve. Now, thing is, this book is really large. That's not usually daunting, but the problem is that this Chaucer guy, he can't even spell. You know, he roamed Brendy for his delicacy, with a Y-E. The Senate tours, he's slow upon a day. I, what's this guy even saying? It's like he doesn't even know English, this guy. All I can say is, this is a Penguin volume, and don't they have editors? Can't they fix this stuff? So anyway, this guy who can't even spell, I've got to write, I've got to read this 1,200-page book with sentences like, but for to speck of virtuous beauty, with T-E-E. -E. I mean, what? Ah, fine, I'll read this book. So I got that one, and it's all, it's all Steve's fault. This next one is Steve's fault as well, but it, at least it's been translated into English. And that is this book. This is the, Mary, the McCoyka Sisters. The McCoyka Sisters uh, by Junikiro Tanizaki. Yeah. So apparently, this is a book, I believe, that was written back in the 50s that is supposed to be a great book, and I've never read it, and I must read it. I must read it, says Steve. So here I am with this book, The Makieko Sisters by Junikiro Tanizaki. Supposed to be really good. It's supposed to be really good. And at least, you know, I looked through it. And yeah, all the words are spelled correctly in English in this one. So at least there's that. So yeah, I've got this book. And then there's this little book, uh, this slight little book, which I have not read yet. And apparently, and I must. And that is The Tale of Genji by Murasaka Shikobu. 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 The Tale of the Genji, The Tale of Genji, which is kind of big. This is uh, Penguin Deluxe Edition, so it's real fancy pants and nice with the French flaps and deckled edges, and it's huge, which is cool because apparently this is a really, really good book, and I'm a dope for not having read it yet. So The Tale of Genji, this is a book I need to put on the top of my Classics TBR because I must, I must read it says Steve. <sighs> okay, fine. I'll read this little book, The Tale of Genji. It looks pretty cool, though. It's got these little illustrations all over the book. And Steve Donahue does speak highly of it. I've heard only good things pretty much about this book forever. I've heard two good things about this book. Well, I've heard two things about this book. One that it's that is that it's gigantic, and another that it's great. And so it's good that it's gigantic if it's great, because it's a great big book. The Tale of Genji, and now I've got it, and now I've got to read it. So those three books are all Steve's fault. This next book, I blame on some mystery person who put it in the Little Free Library uh, on the next block over from the manor. Very rarely nowadays does this Little Free Library have anything good, but I was shocked to find a hardcover copy of this book, Taiko, by Iji Yoshikawa, author of Musashi. Now, I loved Musashi. I loved Musashi. It's one of my favorite books, one of my 100 favorite books, actually. But, I'll, but I've never read this book, Taiko. I've never actually even seen a copy of it. So here it is. Now, it is a little bit damaged. It's got uh, some damage to the dust jacket there. It's got this little hole in the corner, although the book itself seems to be in really good shape. It's got Japan there. And so it was just hanging out there. This really nice hardcover in the Little Free Library it was free. It was free. It was free. I had to take it. I had no choice. When you see a great book 
Well, I don't know if it's great. I haven't read it, but it's probably really good. If you see something that's probably really good that you would buy, or, you know, that Roger would, you got to get it, right? You have to take it. You have to take it. You've got no choice. I had no choice. I had to take this. So here it is. Now I've got... I've got three more books here. There are three more of this series coming. So this is half... Half an order of books. Uh, that none of these are my fault. So three books here and three books in the next Hall of Adventure, which are not my fault at all. These books are the fault of uh, Adam White from the fabulous booktube channel Deshelved with Adam White. He did a video on these books, Adam White did. And after watching that video, Roger had no choice. He had no choice but to buy them because he realized, Roger did, understandably, that these are books I have to read. Uh, I've only read the first novel in this series, which is much longer than I thought it was. So, Adam White, this is all your fault as usual. Adam gets me to spend so much damn money, that guy. Well, Roger, he gets Roger to spend the money. I mean, I, I have nothing to do with it. So, Zorro. Zorro by Johnston McCulley, The Complete Pulp Adventures, Volume 1. Look at that. That's awesome. It's Zorro, The Complete Pulp Adventures by this guy. This is from Bold Ventures. Zorro. Zorro. And, uh, yeah. So this is, this has the first uh, few adventures of Zorro, The Mark of Zorro, which was the per was it the Curse of Capistrano originally? Then Zorro saves a friend and Zorro hunts a jackal. And an article in there about Zorro on the silver screen. So this is the first volume of a six-volume Zorro series, which I had to obviously get. The Complete Pulp Adventures of Zorro, Volume 1, which of course was followed by... The Complete Pulp Adventures of Zorro, Volume 2. There's Zorro once again. This is Volume 2 with more adventures of Zorro. This has the further adventures of Zorro. Zorro deals with treason and the mysterious Don Miguel. The mysterious Don Miguel. So yeah, Volume 2 of The Complete Pulp Adventures of Zorro. Which, of course, brings us to Volume 3 of The Complete Pulp Adventures of Zorro. And Volumes 4, 5, and 6 will probably be coming at you in the next Hall of Adventure, which I'm sure won't be for a while. I'm sure that won't happen. I'm sure that won't happen for a while. But in this volume, what do we have in Volume 3? So we've got... Oh, there's lots of Zorro in this one. We've got Zorro and the Serials, which is an introduction by Johnny Petty. There's Zorro Rides Again. And then it looks like a bunch of short stories. Uh, Zorro draws his blade. Zorro upsets a plot. Zorro strikes again. Zorro saves a herd. Good for you, Zorro. Zorro runs the gauntlet. Zorro fights a duel. I bet he fights more than one in this book. Zorro opens a cage. Zorro prevents a war. Hey, that's pretty good of you, Zorro. Zorro fights a friend. That's not so great. Zorro's Hour of Peril, and finally, Zorro slays a ghost. Isn't that ghost already dead? Probably not. There's something going on in that story of Zorro. So this is Zorro, The Complete Pulp Adventures, Volume 3. All the Fault of Adam White. So there you go. Another Hall of Adventure. All of which is not my fault. So I will catch you next time.